Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Laura with Diamond Painting and Stitching with Laura. And tonight we're going to be working on the plastic beaded um, cross stitch that I got from AliExpress here last week sometime. Sorry about the dog. Oh, nothing has gone perfect. But uh, it's been a better day than yesterday. Yesterday just completely was a nightmare. We were busy from the time I got there to the time I left. Just, It was just horrendous. You would have thought it was a Saturday, actually. It was just horrible. But uh, today went a lot better. And that's why I decided to do a video. How's everybody's Monday going? I hope it went well for everybody else. But uh, I've been kind of working on this. A little bit last night I just needed something to unwind with so I ended up working on it you can see I've got that much of the second rows done let me come this way and that way you can see there's the first one and there's the second one but yeah it's turned out really nice let me back you out a little bit just a bit and then we'll move you back over here sorry for all the moving it, it's been one of those days but today went exceptionally well for a Monday. Sometimes Mondays will really shock you, you know. I mean, it'll either go really well or it'll go really, really bad and be really busy. Like if it was a holiday, it'd be horrible. Just horrible. But uh, some days, just right out of the blue, it'll just be a horrible day. But, uh, oh well, at least today went well. Everybody that was supposed to be there showed up, unlike yesterday. And we were just busier than one arm paper hangers, I'm telling you. But uh, today went went good. We had a new girl start, and uh, she's doing really well. This is her, like, second day. So we will see. You know, I mean, I, I got hopes for her. You know, I mean, she seems intelligent enough. And I don't know if she's worked. I haven't had a chance, you know, to talk to her to see what her background or experience is, but uh, so far so good, you know, I mean, she can take instructions and, and go with it, you know, so I always count, whoops, count that as a plus, but yeah, this is going really well, I'm shocked, just absolutely shocked, so I've been pretty happy with it. And it doesn't seem to take too long to make progress on it, you know, like that other one. I don't know. I'll put it down for a while and, and let it go, but uh, we'll just keep working on this a little bit at a time. And I haven't really decided how I want to work it, you know, so that... Because these over here I had a hard time seeing because the beads are so big. So I thought maybe I'd work from the inside and uh, on my way out, like in a circular, because it seems to be circular. You can see that it's circular. But uh, we'll just go and put color in and, and kind of go for broke and see where it takes us. I started working on the, uh, whoops, the uh, pansy over here. I'm really anxious to see what the, pansies are going to look like, but I didn't get too far. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you can see it. So, let me see if I can bring you in just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. But I am feeling better, so hopefully there'll be more more videos. Um, I ordered another diamond painting the other day, so it says it'll be here in the middle of July, so who the hell knows? You know, it has to come from China. And I still have one diamond painting out, and, God, it seems like I ordered, whoops, I don't know where that went. Um, ordered it, oh, I think it was like the first part of June, and it's been in Chicago for probably a good week. And I have no idea what the hell's going on with it. And it's not a big one. It, it's a small one. I haven't ordered any big ones yet. For a while, I, I've got an, my hands full with Diamond Art Club. I may go buy that Fathoms Below. I think that's what it's called. But uh, 
I haven't done that yet. Friday's payday, so we'll see. And I usually get them within the week, so there's not a big deal with them. But, uh, and so I, I, I'm kind of getting spoiled rotten that some of this stuff gets here in three or four days and others seem to take two or three weeks. I'm not used to ordering from China anymore. I don't know where that... Oh, there it is. At least they're big enough to pick up. That part I like. Because I usually have my nails cut short because of work and uh, I don't do anything. I can't pick anything up is what I'm saying. This is pretty long for mine right now. I, after it starts getting under my nails at work, I just, I have to cut them off. But, uh, it's funny, I have to cut them off when I'm at work here, but I worked for like a, a mini mart, you know, where you'd get gas and you'd just pick up snacks and drinks and stuff like that. And my nails were like past a quarter inch long because I didn't have to keep cutting them off because I wasn't cooking. And, uh, yeah. So, but I like them short. But they sure are a pain to try to pick up those um, little tiny, tiny, I call them seed beads. I, I don't know if they're smaller than seed beads, but boy, they sure are tiny and they're a pain to pick up. I was watching the Lovecraft Forever and she had a, a felt mat. Not mat, but I mean, she just probably made it, you know, from a piece of felt you could buy. Oh, hell, I don't even know where you buy felt anymore. I mean, I'm, I don't have any, uh, what do you call it, fabric stores around here. And sometimes they sell, oh, yeah, that's attractive. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I almost put two on there. Um, you can get felt in packages, you know, different colors, you know, for kid projects and whatever project you got going. I don't work with felt anymore. I used to 112 years ago, but, uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, and she laid out her beads, you know, maybe six or eight of the three or four colors that she was working on. And, uh, then when she went to pick it up, she just stick it, you know, like it'd be on the thing, so she'd just stick it there and then move it up with her finger, but I find that my little lids work really well, really well. I'm really pleased with them as far as a beading project would go, and she could also stick her um, needle in it, so I thought that was pretty good, and she's had a couple tutorials on uh, stitching projects, and today, um, as a matter of fact, I was looking at Amazon again because I watched, oh, I forget what it's called. There's a lady, and she's on floss tube, and she makes patterns and does all kinds of, you know, fancy, fancy, dancy stuff, but she had a, a sampler that she had, um, graphed out, you know, that had been an antique sampler. So that'll tell you where her experience is. She's, she's, she's a big wig. And, uh, cause I can't do that. I mean, I could if I really concentrated, but I'm just not into it. But anyway, um, it got me to thinking, I wonder if they had any samplers on, uh, Amazon. And there, whoops, sorry. There was a few and some were really spendy and I, some were, uh, you know, you'd have to have your own fabric and your own thread to do them. But I just thought that would be kind of interesting because I don't think I've ever done a sampler. And I didn't know if I wanted a sampler that was just strictly cross-stitch or if I got one that was um, embroidery, you know, with embroidery stitch, other embroidery stitches besides cross-stitch. So I thought that was kind of cool. But... There were some that were kitted up, and they were some were kind of spendy, and I think, and God, it's just the fabric. But here enters the problem. Um, when you go to order that kind of a thing, uh, you have to be very careful of what kind, how many count the fabric is.
because if you want something that's really really small it, it'll be like 35 or 28 or something like that count and I can't see it there, I just literally can't see it so I, I kind of eh, abandoned that to a certain extent because I didn't know if I wanted to purchase just the pattern and then uh, try to order some 11 or uh, 14 count uh, material because like I said there isn't a fabric store that would sell that kind of you know where you could have a choice and so I've heard um, Stitcherista talk about um, some of the different stitching companies that are online that she orders from and I'd have to go back I don't can't name any you know rightly but uh, so there's a lot of patterns out there I just don't know if I want to start from scratch and get my own thread and all that stuff so so I don't know it, it's it's up in the air but it's a thought and you really didn't get a good picture of what it looked like you know and how in-depth it was or if it was just cross stitch or if it had other um, specific stitches involved so I didn't know how involved it was going to be so I'm kind of up in the air I don't know where that's going to go so don't be surprised hang on I gotta get rid of this thread over here because we're getting way too high um, and I was watching uh, Crafty Lisa I think that's her name and she is in the UK somewhere I don't know if she's in Scotland or or just where or in England I don't know she calls things the UK so I don't know what that means to anybody because I don't live there so okay so we're gonna go right down here and start again but uh, she does all she got that chatterling oh my god I think she probably spent well over three hundred dollars for this kit and it was it would have been gorgeous it would have been a waste of my time and my money because there ain't no way now that would ever get finished but she does a lot of different you know stitching projects she likes to stitch and she's been known to do diamond painting every once in a while but uh, her main goal is uh, stitching that I've seen from her and she does some beautiful patterns but um, what was she doing oh I can't think she was doing a big one and she had it on her hoop not hoop that's not the word scroll thing so I was kind of watching and I think she has one that uh, slides you know there's a stand and then it's got two things like like this and then the scroll sits across it so it comes down and there's a stop and you can put it across your lap and then it tips I think I don't know it but uh, it's interesting to watch how people actually work with those things giving me some ideas but I don't know it's kind of a lost cause for me so I don't know but uh, I noticed that she did have a scroll thing and I'm sure she's got other things she's got like a round one on a stand and and the whole nine but like I said that's her main priority or her her like or preference if you will but and she does some beautiful stitching and patterns she's done some hate stuff oh my god I wouldn't even begin to attempt oh yeah but see I don't like the damn counted cross stitch it's so hard to to keep up with it and I don't know so it's a loss for me so I'll, I'll let you know I'll keep you informed on that that uh, what do you call it sampler thing you know I mean they had a few patterns and of course I see more patterns for just regular cross stitching that are just absolutely gorgeous but you know you can only do so many of these in one lifetime and I don't want to Oh, sorry hang on guys it it got to the little this thing is knobby that's why mine this thing would not fit on the scroll 
because it'll be too lumpy and bumpy to scroll up. So, I don't know. It, I'm just going to do it this way. And what the heck did I do here? Yep, that's what I thought I did. Okay, hang on, guys. We got to fix something. Now, come on. There we go. I was going to say, I went into the wrong corner. I have enough problems with all this crap, you know? And I really like the beaded cross stitch, and I like the way it looks, so... Who knows? You know, I might get something for a little variety in the stitching, but... I almost got some tea towels and stuff, but, uh, eh, I kind of talked myself out of it, and just... I don't know, I think that after a while, they just kind of look cheap compared to, uh, these printed kits. So, I mean, that's just my opinion. And I have no use for them. They're, the, you know, they would just be something that I did just to say that I actually did them. I'm running out of thread again, dudes. So, I don't know. I don't know where it's going. And I, I'm i just not in the mood to buy any more diamond paintings. I've got probably over 50 freaking diamond paintings. And Hang on, we're going to have to lose this thread again. But when she turned hers over, I mean, it just looked like perfection. It's like, no. Nah. So, you know, they're all on a higher plane than me because I just started back into this. And, and I really don't care what the back looks like as long as the front looks good. But that's just me. Just me. Just me. So. Now it's like, where did I lay the thread? But these go on really good. But, uh, gotta get my thread. I should have done this ahead of time. I tried to thread three or four needles, and I got a needle that was actually too big for the stupid beads. I couldn't believe it. I found this pack of needles in, in my purse of all places. It's like, no wonder I can't find anything. And, uh, it's all hanging out in my purse together. So I don't know how that got there, but I use those real small ones, and I know where they're at uh, for the uh, the cottage, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, you know, if I want to take stitching to another level or or not, you know. I just haven't made up my mind, or if I want to change it up a bit and do something else besides the bead cross stitch but I kind of like sticking with this and, and just plain uh, cross stitch because it's easy I don't have to think about how do I make that stitch or you know anything it's it's pretty mindless you know you just put the bead down where it's supposed to be and you go on kind of like diamond painting so I don't know but I just thought a sampler would look pretty and they've got some really nice ones. There's some from a company in Copenhagen, or it's called Copenhagen. I haven't established that, but it did say something about Norwegian stitching. So that would have been my, like, first clue to flee in the opposite direction because they do beautiful, beautiful, beautiful handwork. And it's, like, right up there with that Chinese stuff, you know, that's done on silk. So, you know, it... It, the extreme was one one end to the other so I gave up it was too much to think about too early in the morning but uh, so I, I like doing this for right now and this is what we're doing I may do a, a drill with me tomorrow night I don't know it depends how tomorrow goes we will just have to see but uh, it's just been crazy. I think everybody takes off on vacation the first week of June. You know, the first two weeks, I should say, of June. And, oh, my God, everybody and his dog has been into this restaurant. It's like, my God. Yeah, it makes you feel like nobody knows how to cook anymore, you know, because they're always buying dinner out. Some people you see, you know, all the time, and others are just you know, on, on vacation or whatever. but And I guess it's a good cheap place to go and get a meal for the family. 
I don't know, we ate at restaurants, but when we were out, we didn't go to McDonald's or any place like that, because that wasn't so prevalent back then, but, uh, you know, every once in a while you'd hit a Howard Johnson's and clam sounded really good, you know, or something like that, because we always went to Howard Johnson's for clams and, or New England clam chowder, oh my god, what I wouldn't kill for in one of them places, but I don't believe they're in business anymore. If they are, it's not around here because they've closed several of them, you know. And uh, that was a long time ago. But we'd go to restaurants like that or, <clears throat> excuse me, or a mom and pop type restaurant. Because they didn't have so much fast food back then. And, you know, we'd kind of decide, oh, we're having sandwiches for lunch and we'll get a, go or get a good meal, you know. When we finally get to the room or... Or we'd get to the room and we'd go to the grocery store that was available there and go get a watermelon and put it in the the ice cooler and let it chill up the day and then we'd get Kentucky Fried Chicken. That was about as fast food as it got back then. But, uh, yeah. So it, it's kind of weird that how times have changed. Hell, back when my kids were little, they'd... <coughs> They would kill to go to McDonald's because we always lived someplace where there wasn't a McDonald's. You know, so McDonald's and Burger King was all new to them. But uh, we didn't eat, or we'd stop at a Denny's maybe, you know. It depends what we were doing. And sometimes I just cooked in the motel room in my electric skillet. My electric skillet went everywhere, I swear. Just whoop that puppy out and whip up dinner and no time. But now they won't let you cook in your room. Oh my goodness. But we sure did it. Several times. But, uh... Oh, come on. It's just being a poop. It's kind of hard to, to work on here. When I can't lift the... The thing to bend it. Sometimes I get a bend in it. Like right there, but... It depends how much room I've got. And you gotta kind of watch this, because this uh, cotton thread is kind of stretchy if you will I, I don't know how to explain it it I mean I'll find a bead that is just standing straight up and I know I tightened it down you know when I pulled it through or whatever so I don't know but it doesn't seem to happen in the middle you know where there's a whole mass of them it's just like on the edges so I don't know if I caught something on it or, or what but I just tack it down as I'm sewing whoops sewing in the um, the next bead you know next the bead next to it if I could just talk oh come on and then it just wants to be that way there we go sorry about that guys didn't mean to knock you into smithereens there so I don't know what I've got planned my days off are Thursday and Friday yay I get payday off. I don't know what to do with myself. Well, we'll probably go to lunch. And I'm not going to McDonald's again. But uh, I'm a little over McDonald's. I'm with my daughter. I like to go someplace and have a good hamburger. That ain't it. I mean, it was nice in the beginning because I lived in a, a rural town. And there was about 400 people that lived in the town where I lived. And they didn't have any fast food their idea was fast food there was you could go to the grocery store and it was a little bitty teeny tiny itty bitty grocery store didn't even have a meat counter and barely sold meat and it was all froze and uh of course some of it you know came from the farmers around there hang on i gotta tie this off again we're back at the okay corral and i gotta pull that so it kind of gets snugs up that last bead and uh anyway their idea of fast food there they had a place where you could order pizzas and it was about oh 10 by 12 place and you could choose from you know six or eight pizzas or make your own or whatever not make your own but design your own pizza so to speak as to uh what you wanted on it and uh, then come and pick it up you know you could order ahead of time but that was it for there and then the next 
closest place was like 15 minutes away. So if I was working there, that's where I worked, I would, you know, call up my boyfriend and uh, say, what do you want for dinner? You know, I'm right here on top of the store and wouldn't have to run in. And do you want pizza? Because they had a pizza hut. They had a pizza hut and a subway. But uh, that was about the extent of it in that town. And so we didn't get McDonald's and Burger King or, or big choices, you know. Oh, they did have Dairy Queen because that's where it worked. But uh, so there wasn't much there. And that town had about 3,000 people in it. And uh, so I would call him and say, what do you want for dinner? And then I either went to the grocery store or I picked it up at the fast food place and then came home. Because there was no sense in driving back. Because it was usually hotter in Hades in the middle of summer. With all that humidity. And it would be about 100% humidity and 100, 100 degrees temperature. And it was horrible. So you, when you got home, you got home. Because I wasn't going nowhere. Even to go get that pizza, which was about two blocks away. So you better figure it out by the time I get ready to get off work. And we did, you know, and we kind of got sick of those three. But uh, I like to cook a lot. And sometimes I cook, but I didn't cook a lot in the summer. I would make, like, pasta stuff. Uh, what do you call it? Pasta salad. And then I'd have it for two or three days. I'd make... I have a 12-quart uh, pot that I use for canning. And I would just make up pasta salad. And we'd have pasta salad or... You know, something cool, and we had a, a garden, so I would go out and pick vegetables in the garden and, you know, fix something like that, and then just microwave something for dinner, because I wasn't, you don't want to get that house any hotter than it can, because then when you go to lay down, it's hotter than hell. We didn't have some central air at all, so we had uh, an air, uh, great big fans blowing and we had ceiling fans of course but we didn't have central air so it wasn't none too cold and we had a great big old BTU uh, air conditioner and my electric bill was about the same winter and summer for running that great big air conditioner but uh, it and it was only a four room house so it didn't have far to go but and we'd use the stand-up fans to suck it from one room to the next because god it could get hot as hell there i never lived in such a hot place i guess i did when i was in illinois when i was little but you know you're little you don't notice those kind of things and by the time we moved to chicago when i was in high school we got a house with central air conditioning and then we moved to houston and we definitely had central air conditioning so i wasn't used to being without central air but yeah it could be pretty hot my dad even once we got to uh what do you call it houston and or denver and he said i'm not going to illinois in in august it, that just wasn't happening because 90 percent of the time whoever we were going to go stay with they didn't have central air either so and it was hot as hell so he was going to wait till about October, November to go see people. But he didn't want to go where it was going to be hot and have to lay down and oh, just sweat to death. Oh, I just, I couldn't stand it anymore. Just could not stand it. So, yeah, we've lived in some hot places now. Here, uh, I leave the air conditioner off. I have an air conditioner unit in the front room. And I have a big, tall, what do you call it, turbo fan? You know, the oscillating fan. That's the word I want. And uh, when I get home, I just turn on the air conditioner for probably a couple hours. And uh, it cools this place right down. And then oh, about 7, 8 o'clock, I can open the front door and it'll cool the whole house off. So... I'm lucky, you know, as far as that goes. And it's not humid here like it was. I mean, God, you'd just be dripping sweat in those other places. I just, ugh. You just go from one place to the other or one air conditioning unit to the other. And California was horrible, too. 
God, it was 112, but that was dry heat. And it was, oh my God, just like somebody opened a furnace or opened an oven. It was bad. So, well, we're making some kind of progress here, guys. I'm going to try to stay down here in this lower part. My list is growing on what, well, damn it. I can't get that last little bead and into its hole. It's out of my way. Okay, I'm going to start on that orange right there. Put these away. That's pretty. Look like pearls we used to wear around our necks. Oh, God, people. The times that have passed us all by. Orange is number 18. Well, guess what? It's more pink. It's another shade of pink. I don't know if you'll be able to even tell the difference there. Hang on just a second. What is going on? Did I move it? I moved it too far. Sorry, people. Hang on. Okay, we're back. I don't think you can even tell the difference from those. They're so close in colors. I mean, I can tell when I'm looking down on it, but... Oh, well. It is what it is. And that green is a, another shade. It'll look like that other one over here. Let's see if I can get it up through there. So, not much happening here. Well, if I could find the hole to stick it in, we all have it made. I've forgotten what color that one is that runs down through that seam. Dagnabbit. Really? Come on. I know you're not very much thread there. Some days this thing just absolutely gives me fit. I was going to look. Let's see. With the brown slash, it is number 22. So it's even another shade of pink that runs through there, only it's a little bit paler than these. And then the green is, see my list? It's beginning to look like a cheat sheet. <laughs> I got all, whatever color the, the square is, that way I don't have to keep looking it up and looking it up. Sometimes I might have a question about it, but, ah uh, uh, man, I just spilt my beads. Hang on guys. You knew this had to happen, right? I mean, come on. It always happens. I was watching, uh, oh, I want to say Diamond Painting Madness. Oh, I can't think of her name. I'm terrible. But she was cooking tonight. Her oh, her name is Becky. That's it. And uh, she was making chicken pot pie. It almost made me want to jump in the car and go get me a frozen chicken pot pie. I'm still eating them things after 50 years, 60 years. And they still taste pretty good to me for some reason. I don't know why. Every once in a while, I'll buy five or six of them. That way I'll have them when I get really hungry for them. Molly likes to thick the plate afterwards because she really likes that. That gravy that they put on there. I buy her beef in dog food so she doesn't get much chicken she's not real crazy about chicken she does like i used to when i worked for a dairy queen we'd have chicken fingers and we'd cut up you know a little bit of the chicken take the breading off of it and cut it up for her but uh haven't done that too often there's no place to get chicken fingers that are decent there was at the grocery store they had all kinds of deli food but Going to that grocery store is just so not happening for me. Oh, I guess you can kind of see the, the different color. And I think that six is a green. Well, it's a brown. It's that dark brown right here. I'm telling you, that T is a little bit confusing. Because 
I look, oh, this is number six. So, when I went over here to my paper, they've got them numbered 1 through 26. So, you have, you don't want to get 6. You want where 6 is. 6 is 9. Or, number 9. It's like, what the? One night, I must have been so tired. It was like 9, 6, 8. What color is that? Yeah. Yeah. So, some days, I'm just too tired to figure it out. So you can't let it get to you. If you don't know what a color is, just look it up on the the chart. Because the chart, it even has a different symbol. Because it's like, oh my god. Yeah, I, I just quit. Because I knew I was going to screw it up some way. But it, it's a little strange sometimes when they... Aw, oh man, really, Laura Jean? Oh, God, did you see what I did? I'm telling you. Hang on. i got to go after this. There we go. I was going in the wrong direction. Oh, sure. Let's use a short piece of string. I'm telling you. But I do like these big eyed needles, man. I can see them. Absolutely. Come on. Really? It's just being a poop. And there's hardly enough thread to go up and down. Here we go. All right, let's try that again, guys. Okay, we got to go to that side. Yeah, you don't much. Are you kidding? Okay, I'm not even going to go there. Not going there. We are not taking that mess out. I think I did the whole line like that. Oh, holy heck. But it really doesn't change your beads. Just go around them. And once you see they're so close, nobody could tell. And only you know, so it depends how much work you want to put into it. <coughs> oh, God. This cough will not go away. But, hey, I'm on the third day of not taking NyQuil to lay down. So, yay. Go me. I still got beads running around over here. Jeepers, creepers. Ah, oh, don't do it again. There we go. I think I'll get that uh, dark one out and put it, or that one with that slash in it. That way we'll have this whole little section done. i got to get a new piece of thread, though, before I get too carried away. I'm always planning ahead, and then I realize I've got about two inches of thread. Oh, yeah. It is special that way. But it goes pretty fast when I'm not trying to film it. So. All right. Oops, leave that alone. Let me get an, another thread. But at least you don't have to sit here for 20 days while I try to get that in that stupid needle. It usually goes on the first try, which is a plus. Okay, now what did I say that color was? Color number 22. I just need about eight of them. So we'll just pour a few in. See, it's just kind of a paley. I don't know, I can't tell. It. It's probably a pale pink. We're gonna, oh yeah, let me put the bead on first. before. No, move the beads. get those in there. They look almost white. Because they're so... Oh, shit. So, uh... Pale. In comparison to what I've been using. I would have wanted to get them in there while I could still see that. It does kind of have a, a little pink... Really? A pink glow. I almost put that bead right on the bottom.
this is the row that I messed up. See, we're not infallible. I wonder why that wasn't going so hot. But it'll be fine. Once I get it where I need it. And then you won't even be able to tell that I put them stitches in there sideways or in a different direction because they're they're so big they cover up a multitude of sins believe me guys so I just don't feel like tearing them out it's not like taking five diamond painting or diamonds off of a diamond painting no then I have to restitch it all just not happening Hey, hey. I'm starting to calm down now. I only got through my day. Jeez. And it's so hard when you have somebody new because you have to keep telling them how to do this and how to do that. I come home, I can't hardly really talk because my throat hurts so bad. And yesterday we didn't get nothing done but making pizza, making pizza, making pizza. I swear we must have had five orders that were over 25 pizzas. It was like, are you kidding people? It's like everybody decided to have pizza at once. Okay. We got it. Now, can you see the difference? Oh, man. I swear, I keep moving it. I don't know. The light's kind of shining on it. But you can't tell. So it does, it has some really good shading. I think the roses turned out really well. And it'll probably look better from a distance. I've been on top of this for so long. But, uh, all right, guys. Well, I think we're going to end it here. And get a hold of my thread. Get that clipped out of there well we got a little bit done well thanks for joining me guys and listen to me yip and yap and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and do hit the bell and that way you'll know when my next video comes out and y'all have a good evening and a good week god bless bye bye